Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy and welcome back to another Foundation Friday for over 50s where we test foundation on more mature, less than perfect skin. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new foundation from Chanel. It is the number one De Chanel revitalizing foundation. This retails for $70 for one ounce and it comes in 20 shades. This is supposed to be a buildable foundation with a luminous finish. It has moisturized ingredients that soften the skin making it appear plump and naturally beautiful. So the formula for this foundation is supposed to be more sustainable with 94% naturally derived ingredients and the packaging is supposed to reduce the carbon footprint. So that's all to the good. This is in a frosted glass heavyweight container. It does have a pump dispenser underneath the cap. Um, the ingredient that would help to minimize environmental impacts on the skin is their camellia oil, which is used throughout this entire line of both the skincare and the makeup. And that is an antioxidant, and so it can help to protect your skin from environmental impacts. You know, I'm not a big one for having skincare in my foundation. This does contain a number of botanical extracts. It contains glycerin and vitamin E. It also contains fragrance, but it doesn't contain any SD alcohol. The shade I bought it in is B30. That is the same shade that I wear in all the Chanel foundations. So when I test foundation, I put it through a multi-day wear test. I try it with a number of different sunscreens underneath. I try it with primer without, with setting powder without. Try it for a 10 hour wear test. Show it to you in bright outdoor light, natural window light, here in the studio lights so that you really get a good look at the foundation. And if you like a thorough foundation review, go ahead and give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So let's dig in on the new one from Chanel. So the first day that I tested it, I used my Holy Grail sunscreen combination, which is Elta MD mixed with Dr. G Green Mild Up Sunscreen. I didn't use any primer because I always like to test the foundation first day with no primer to see how it does on its own. This foundation is a lightweight liquid liquid formula. One pump is very small. The fragrance is noticeable right when you're applying it, but it does dissipate quickly. I used a beauty blender sponge to apply it to one side of my face. Okay, wow. <laughs> I mean, you guys know Chanel Ultra Latent Velvet. It's my holy grail for years, but a little bit too drying. This one doesn't have the alcohol highly placed on the ingredient list. But oh my gosh, does this look beautiful on the skin. It looks like skin, it doesn't look like makeup. But the coverage is beautiful, the color is spot on. I mean, look at the difference between the side with just one, like half of a tiny pump, versus without. I used a second pump for the other side of my face and applied it with the BK Beauty 101 brush. It went on easily and blended out smoothly with both the sponge and the brush. I did like the coverage and the look of it on the brush side slightly better than on the sponge side. When it was just applied, I thought it looked really beautiful. It does have a luminous finish, which usually I'm not a fan of, but it's a soft luminosity. It's not a super hard shine. So my pores and textures are still visible, but they're not overly accentuated. Let me take a look at the wrinkle situation. Mm, it is settled a little bit in my little smile line there. Less on the sponge side than on the brush side. There's a tiny bit in there. Not a deal breaker. No one else is going to see it but me. And on this side, I'm not really getting the settling in here. So that looks good. It is a little bit clingy right here by the side of my nose. I think it's just sitting on the skin so beautifully. It doesn't look like makeup. It just looks like my skin only better. It feels a little bit tacky right now. So it's not one that dries instantly. So you do have a little bit of time to work with it. I'm not going to powder it today because I don't wear powder on the first day that I test the makeup. I do have combo skin. I'm mostly normal, slightly oily through the T-zone. But with the rest of my makeup on, I thought it looked really, really good. It played really well with all the cream products that I used on that day. I used a cream blush, a cream bronzer, and a cream highlighter as well. So then I went ahead and took the flash picture of it. For that, I go into a closet so I can do a 
flash picture point blank to see if there's any flashback and it did look like it was giving me a little bit of flashback overall but it does photograph nicely so i went about my day and came back to check in on the makeup after five hours uh, without powder this has gotten fairly luminous in the last five hours i mean i really like the finish to start it was very soft luminosity now it's looking a little bit more oily like right through here i'd say it looks a little oily and i would want to blot that if i was gonna like go do something which i am but i'm probably gonna have a mask on so i'll just leave it um and it's looking a little like oily right up here i think it's wearing really really well it still looks really good it looks really really youthful it's not accentuating any wrinkles it is still settled into this wrinkle here where it was before but here where it didn't settle in the wrinkle with the sponge it's still not settling there and uh, not settling anywhere else either like forehead wrinkles it's not settling in it was even in place on my forehead which i was surprised at because i had worn a hat to take my dogs for a walk because it was a cold 25 degree day and we were out for probably an hour and i had a hat on and it hadn't worn off on my forehead all right you guys hi i'm back it's time for the 10 hour check-in on the number one de chanel foundation and I think it's holding up really, really well for 10 hours of wear. I think it looks really good. The only thing that I would change about it, if I could, is it gets a little bit shiny through the T-zone, feeling a little, you know, sweaty looking. But um, other than that, the wear is really good. It's not really super worn off on my nose or chin or anywhere else. It hasn't made my skin look older and more wrinkly, which is always good. So I'm really happy with it. So I think the next time I wear it, I'll definitely powder the T-zone and probably like it a little bit better. But other than that, I think it's really, really, really good. I'm really happy with it. It felt very comfortable to wear all day long and it also felt really, really hydrating. I felt like my skin looked youthful and really great all day long. So wow, that was a really great start for day one. I love it when that happens, but then sometimes on day two, I'll switch up the sunscreen and the whole thing goes downhill. So let's check in and see what happened on day two. So the second time I wore it, I used another all mineral sunscreen. This is the Dr. Jart Every Sunday, which is lighter weight and has a more matte finish than the sunscreens I had used previously. Even though it had been super long wearing the day before on its own without any helpers, I decided to just try a primer underneath it just to make sure that it worked well with other products. So I added Flower Beauty Celestial Primer on one side of my face. I applied it with my fingers because that's how Chanel says to apply it. And my gosh, if it didn't go on great with the fingers too. And the foundation went on over that very nicely. It didn't change the application. It didn't change the look of the foundation. I did add a light dusting of my Honest Beauty Blurring Setting Powder to minimize my pores and take the shine down a little bit. With the powder, it still looked really, really nice. The powder didn't make it suddenly go heavy or cakey looking. It just looked really skin-like, really natural, really youthful. So it was a beautiful, bright, sunny day that day. So I grabbed my vlogging camera to do the outdoor sunshine test. So let me bring in the different lighting tests now. Hello oh, there. I didn't want to go outside because it's like 24 degrees out but there is blinding sun coming in this window so i can show you the chanel one de chanel um, with setting powder it's been on for a few hours so it's not super fresh but um in the blinding sunshine so here we go Okay, and here's the Chanel just in regular indirect window light. Okay, hi, I'm back five hours in with the new Chanel foundation. Do we like? We do like. It looks really, really good. So happy. It's like, looks just applied. It's barely worn off at all. Um, I was just thinking about how awesome it looked on my nose which is usually like worn off in other foundations it's not sliding around not doing anything funky there is some settling in this little wrinkle right here but again not on this side this is the side that i put the primer on 
feel like it just looks so nice and natural and skin-like. I love the finish once I add setting powder. Like now it's starting to get just the slightest bit, you know, a little bit dewy through here. But yeah, all in all, I think it looks really, really good. At the 10 hour check-in, I thought, it still looks great. Oh my gosh, another day of 10 hours of solid wear. This is amazing. I mean, it's not worn off at all. So I feel like this foundation could really go for like 12 or you know, so hours, the kinds of claims that other products make that they never live up to. I love it that it's so long wearing on its own, and I actually don't see any difference between the primer side and the no primer side, which really just shows me how long wearing this is on its own, that it's matching the wear with a primer, and I was really just stoked about it, really loving it at the end of day two. All right, so two really good days with two mineral sunscreens, but I did want to try it with a chemical sunscreen, just for those of you who wear chemical sunscreen to see how it played with that. So for day three, I didn't record a lot of footage. I pretty much put on my uh, Isn't Tree Watery Essence SPF 50 sunscreen, applied the foundation like I normally would, put on the rest of my makeup. I didn't use primer because I'm really impressed with the staying power of this on its own. Didn't really feel like it needed any primer. I did use setting powder just because I didn't want it to get shiny throughout the day. Wore it all day. Gotta say there was really nothing new to report. It wore just as well with the chemical sunscreen under it as it had with the mineral sunscreen. So I got 10 solid hours of wear out of it. I thought it looked youthful and beautiful on my skin the entire day. It didn't feel drying. It didn't feel heavy. It didn't feel uncomfortable to wear. I mean, it is just such a real winner. I am just like, wow, I'm wowed by this foundation. And I'm so happy that I am because, you know, I'm afraid that they are discontinuing my Holy Grail Chanel foundation, which is the Ultra Latin Velvet which is a great foundation, but it has so much SD alcohol in it that I really don't use it a lot during the winter months because it kind of dries out my skin a little bit during that time of year, and I can only really use it a half a year. And this one, it doesn't have that drying alcohol in it. Instead, it has you know that camellia oil and some other things in it. It's just a better for your skin foundation. Nevertheless, that was a fantastic foundation, but I gotta say, I feel like this one performs even better than that one and looks even better. You know, I think you guys already know no, I really, really love this, but let's go ahead and do the pros and cons on it anyway, just to see what are in the column. So on the pro side is that it is super easy to apply. You can put this on, one on any way, fingers, brush, sponge. It blends beautifully. It doesn't dry down super fast, so it gives you time to work with it. The natural skin-like finish. It is so beautiful, even up close. I feel like it just looks like skin. It doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look like a mask of makeup. It moves with my skin. It has a nice sheer to medium buildable coverage. You guys know that I prefer a sheer foundation look to a full coverage masky makeup look. It definitely covers up everything that I want to cover, uh, but yet it still looks very sheer and skin-like. The wear time is really outrageous on this. I mean, you know, 10 solid hours looking great, like no wear anywhere. It feels comfortable to wear all day. It feels lightweight and it's not drying. This felt very, very moisturizing. During the day, it made my skin look and feel like plumper and more dewy. And after I took it off at night, no problems with my skin. My skin didn't feel dry and parched and worse. It felt really nice and hydrated. It really didn't settle into my wrinkles too much. It really only settled in one wrinkle on one side of my face, but everywhere else on my forehead, in my crow's feet, the other side, no settling in all those wrinkles. So I'm gonna say minimal settling into wrinkles, although you may find a little bit of settling into wrinkles, but it doesn't do it in a bad way. It doesn't get in there and then crack and cake up and look you know, make your wrinkles look bigger and older. It also plays well with other uh, products. So I put it on over primer, it worked great with that. I used it with all my different sunscreens, it worked great with all of those. I put setting powder on it, it didn't make it turn like cakey and heavy looking. So on the con side is the price, Chanel. My other Holy Grail foundation was 50 bucks. This one's 70. I mean, I understand that if you're gonna make a more sustainable product that it's gonna cost a little bit more, you know, for the recycled glass and all the other stuff, but ouch, $70 for a one ounce bottle of foundation. I'm not gonna pretend it's not a lot of money. 
It is, especially for something that I want to reach for all the time. I want to use this every day. And for me, a con is that it gets shiny if you don't powder it. But I feel like for people with dry skin, this is so nice and hydrating. And I know people with dry skin prefer that nice luminous dewy finish. So if you have drier skin, you might not need or want setting powder and it could look beautiful on your skin. All right, so the verdict on the number one De Chanel foundation, I love it. It's my new holy grail. It is ticking all the boxes for my more mature skin, which is basically what I want a foundation to do is to make my skin look better than it is and to not dry it out and to last all day, right? Three simple things. I know it make it sound like it should be easy. It is not easy. How many foundations have I tried looking for that holy grail? And there's like five and now I got a new one. So anyway, new Holy Grail foundation for me. Absolutely love it. I hope that if you try it, that you will love it too. Would love to hear in the comments if you tried it, what you think of it. So that is it for today's Foundation Friday. So if you found this Foundation Friday for over 50s helpful and informative, go ahead and give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, everybody, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.